On this edition of Around BCC, Bristol Community College launches a new program in New Bedford to help that city re-educate high school dropouts. Our featured alum takes her love of science to the clinic and the classroom, and the 2011 soccer season kicks into high gear. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. There's a little bit of nip in the air, that means fall is here and things are moving right ahead at all BCC campuses and thank you for joining us again this month. In 2010, BCC and a private partner worked together to create a public-private partnership to begin and exceed and expand healthcare opportunities for students here in Bristol County. Well, that public-private partnership is working again, this time in a new program that will help the dropout rate in the city of New Bedford and not only the current dropout rate but for students who have dropped out to get back to school. It's called the Middle College Program and we're going to talk about that to begin our show today. Joining me is Dean Teresa Romanovich, the Dean of the New Bedford campus, and Gerald Cavanaugh who is from Higher Education Partners, the key private uh, investor in this project. Thank you for joining me today. A Thank pleasure. Terry, let me start with you. Sure. Um, this middle school uh, project, basically, how did it come about and what kind of a need is it here in the city of New Bedford for a project like this? So um, we've been working in the college for several years now trying to support the individuals who drop out of high school and uh, get disengaged. So we creatively looked at um, an expansion of what is traditionally called the dual enrollment program where students register for college credits and those credits are then back transferred to their high school so that they can receive high school diplomas while, mm -hmm. we're, while they're receiving college credit. That program's been in place w within the institution for a very long time. The middle college model takes those that are, have no longer, are no longer attending high school and bringing them back and bring them into the rich uh, community college environment, giving those, them the same courses that we would give any student uh, at Bristol Community College. And they're placed into these courses based on their testing and so forth. And so it was a creative way to sort of say, wow, we can look at an opportunity to support individuals who no longer had interest in the high school for a variety of reasons and might want to still get a high school diploma. So we sat around with a huge team internally and with a team from the mayor's office and from the New Bedford Public School Department. So it's been kind of a creative project over time. And the teams that's been working on them have been from the academic area, enrollment services, mm -hmm. as well as uh, uh, a staff uh, just in general. So it's pretty exciting to see that these kids who may not have had an opportunity in the past now have a, a nice way to get their high school diploma and, and be excited about coming back to college. Mr. Cavanaugh, you've been affiliated with, you grew up in this area, born and raised in this area. You have a lot invested in this area. What made this attractive for higher education partners to get involved, maybe based on the success at eHealth, e which is right up the road here in New Bedford? Well, we try to make uh, commitments according to the partners that we can find. Uh, and we were incredibly impressed with the Bristol Community College partnership that we were able to forge for the eHealth Careers Program. We. Uh, met with BCC three or four years ago initially, uh, got to know them, got an enormous amount of assistance to get the eHealth program up and running so that when they came to us to ask us to help invest and commit to the middle college program, it was al already an easy decision for us to make. They do things well and they're thorough and uh, we had no question that they would be able to execute on this very nicely. Now, let's go into some of the nuts and bolts of this, Terry. Um, uh, we're in October. The program just literally started this month in October. Um, how does it work? How many students are going to be handled? And um, what are the requirements for students to get into this program? Okay, so the, um, the intake process is taking place this Thursday night where we will have um, students coming in with their parents if they're interested to sign up and um, fill out an application. So we have a general application that just collects general information. Mm -hmm. They'll all be taking the college placement test so that no one will be placed in any academic course that they're not prepared for. And we will look at a group of students who are ready for this first cohort. We're looking at around 20 okay. to 22 students who will start up October 1st in this first group where they will be taking about 13 college credits. 
um, and it will depend on where they placed within the college placement test and, we've pro and we will be providing wraparound support services. So we'll have tutors that will actually be attending classes with them. We will have one-on-one -on -one mentors that will be working with them to make sure that the courses that they're taking here are the courses that they need to backfill into their high school so that they can complete their high school diploma because that's the relationship we want to make sure happens and we will be making sure that they're developing whatever skill sets they need to move forward so they'll be in class starting um, October 1st. Now um, you said there are uh, 20 slots um, there's a potential here that you are going to get a lot more interest mm -hmm. um, uh, is there going to be another cohort starting in, Absolutely. in the spring? Absolutely. So what we think will happen on Thursday, and we could all be surprised, is that we'll get a good solid group um, to start out. And if there is a demand and a need for an, an additional cohort, we'll take a look at that. And then we will be referring people to a January start cohort so mm -hmm. that they can start up. And um, right now we're also looking at a virtual high school that will help um, and that's also being supported by our private partner and that will help those individuals who might also have other courses that they want to take to complete their high school that we may not be offering here because it might be a freshman class that's right. something that we're not doing. Now this phase of the program and either one you can answer this it, it's a one-year pilot correct under mm -hmm. the funding that's being provided by higher education partners and also a, a foundation the um, the Fernandes Memorial Trust, believe, yes. which is affiliated with the Rockefeller Foundation, also provide, hopefully providing some money That's correct. for this. Um, I guess, let me ask you, Mr. Kavanaugh, how much money is being upfronted for this? And um, is it going to be just for this year? And then what's the future? Maybe Terry can answer the second part. What is going to be the future going forward? Well, we're, well, first of all, we're really, we really are confident that this is going to be successful. Right. So we feel very strongly that uh, there will be really big demand for this and I know we're starting small because we want to get it right mm -hmm. we want to figure out how to do this well but I don't think there's any question that this is a program that will have a hundred hundred and fifty two hundred students in, in the next couple of years so having un, ha, having having knowing that we also feel like the mayor that the state will come in and fund it after the first couple of years so we know that we'll have to put in probably two hundred and fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars but we think that that's a worthy commitment and investment because we know that lots of those students will then go on to college to get their associate's degree. Mm -hmm. And we also are very confident that the state will come in and help us fund it. Mm. You mentioned uh, Mayor Scott Lang at a press conference which kicked off this middle college program in September. Mayor Lang talked about the strength and the, the uh, commitment that is put on states when students drop out and also the need for these students to get back into the classroom. The answer to this, I think, is not uh, sitting uh, and, and uh, accepting the idea that, well, there are people who won't graduate from high school and it's just going to cost us a lot of money in the future. The answer is to uh, make sure that we commit the dollars uh, early on uh, in, the, uh, in the individual's life when we still have a very, very uh, uh, strong opportunity to have them become high school graduates, to have them go into college, to have them go into the highest levels of skill training type of programs where they'll be productive members of society. And this money that we allocate now uh, to the, from the standpoint of, of uh, supporting people with lower educational attainment or people who have, uh, who have not get, earned a high school degree can be used for tremendous, tremendous uh, causes and programs. Uh, the number one cause and program is educating a citizenry. And this is what we've uh, committed to doing. Terry, getting back to you, um, this is a pretty intensive training and, and schooling for these students. Uh, are these sessions going to be held at night during the day? When, when are they going to be held? So we're doing the first cohort in the evening because one of the populations that's already jump-started interest into this are those individuals that really are working during the day they've dropped out because of financial commitments at home or whatever and they're actually working and they're um, interested in evening high school mm -hmm. and so this is a different alternative for them to be able to do that evening high school right. while they're also earning a college degree so our first pilot's actually going to be evenings but I think like Jerry said as we start looking at the growth by January we know that there's going to be a demand both day and evening so we're going to be looking at, a, at several cohorts come uh, January that will support 
a different group of people. Now these students are going to be treated just like BCC students. No they're going question. to be coming in, they're going to face the same requirements Absolutely. of passing a class as any Bristol Community College student. But I guess it's also important to note that because some of these students may have had difficult times in high school that they'll also be able to tap in some to some of the support services correct. BCC has to you know helping them succeed. Is that correct? That's correct. And we've also built into the budget um, support services as well, so that we can offer additional tutoring and mentoring as needed for for these students to be successful. And any support that faculty members might need within the classroom, um, a tutor that might be actually attending the class with a faculty member who can support learning within the classroom as well. So we want to make sure that whatever the needs are, if they have accommodation needs, that they they have a disability and they need to be accommodated. If they need to access any of the services that we currently have with our writing labs, they're, they're um, more than welcome to do that as well. So yes, they're definitely uh, college students. They're definitely going to be held to the same rigor and standards that all of our students are, are held to and they're going to have the same faculty members that we have and we've been using with dual enrollment for several years now. You talked about the information session uh, which is being held for this. Uh, but how are our students being targeted um, to, to be recruited? Now, not just any student, as we talked about, can, can right. take advantage of this. Great question. So the nice um, partnership that's been forged with this is we have a relationship with the New Bedford Public School Department, right. both their day program, their alternative high school program, and their evening high school program. So we sent a recruiter out last week to the um, evening high school program and 21 individuals who had come to find out about the evening high school chose to do this model at, at, um, instead mm -hmm. and they're all scheduled to come. The dropout prevention counselor from New Bedford High School and um, Andy Kulak who's the headmaster for the high school have been working with us to send out letters for, to any individual who didn't get their high school diploma this past June who might who didn't return to the high school but might be interested in this model so they've all received an invitation to our opening um, session Thursday night and so there's been exactly what you said target marketing to individuals that have either recently dropped out and they can come back or that evening high school population so the school department has done a phenomenal job in tracking who they're losing mm -hmm. and so this is another way that they can have an option to come back and regroup and have a nice um, way to start their life off o over again. One of the things that was brought up during uh, the press event was that there are a number of students that complete their high school requirements to graduate but may not have passed MCAS. Is there a way for some of these students to take some of this fine tuning to, to get to that next step or would that not be part of this program? So we're exploring that population with the superintendent right okay. now and what those needs are. Where did they score on the MCAST? Are there other proficiency courses that we can give them and, and a possibility of retesting? So we're um, working very collaboratively with the mayor's office and with the superintendent and her staff to figure out how to help solve that issue as well, which, is, if you've heard the press conference, is near and dear to the mayor's heart. <laughs> mm -hmm. And one of the things that I failed to mention and should be mentioned right off the bat is uh, it's a pretty good deal for these students coming back as these services are free. Free. Absolutely free. So how many times can you get a free college degree while you're getting a free high school diploma? So it is a, it is a wonderful opportunity and we are very fortunate to have our private partners who have stepped up to the plate and help us with it. But it's also been an amazing, amazing journey with a lot of people who have helped support this. The mayor's been behind it, the superintendent, we had a unanimous vote at the school committee, mm -hmm. the board of trustees, um, we did a presentation to, they're very excited about it. So there's a lot of synergy and energy in looking at this as a nice alternative for people who just aren't interested in the high school environment anymore for whatever reason. And having this is, as you said, and having it be a free option is right. really pretty exciting. Something that, that has also piqued my curiosity is why something like this may not have been approached in, you know, in the past. I mean, the dropout rate has been a problem in all of our South Coast larger communities, Fall River, New Bedford, Attleboro, Taunton. And, um, you know, it, it, it's the division of BCC and an organization like Higher Education Partners that seem to put it together and it's like, oh, maybe we can do something together to help in this problem. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, hopefully, maybe this will be a model that will be copied uh, maybe in other communities within right. BCC's service area sure. and also other higher education. 
Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, we're also very confident that this will be copied by others. In right. fact, we're working with other community colleges in the, around the country, and at the same time, they'd like to replicate what BCC has done with eHealth careers. They also want to replicate um, a middle college program just because uh, it's helpful to their communities and it helps them recruit better students for the college. So I don't have any question in my mind that this will be a program that will expand around the country and BCC will have been one of the first to actually be able to implement it. The, the, um, the problem has uh, been around for a while, but it's hard to get you know different parties to all work together for right. a common solution. And I think we've mm -hmm. been working really hard for at least three years mm -hmm. uh, on this, and we were finally able to come together in a way where everybody is a winner. Mm. Teresa Romanovich, Gerald uh, Kavanaugh, thank you for joining us, and all the best. We'll have to chime okay, in. And, stay and, tuned. And stay tuned and see how it works, uh, maybe in the in There'll the be students the in our seats next time. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank if you, you uh, want more information about the program, you can uh, give the New Bedford campus a call at 508 678 2811, extension 4002, and you can find out more information about the Middle College program. We'll take a break and we'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Welcome back. On this month's Alumni in Your Community segment, we look at a local dental hygienist who is successful in the field as well as in the classroom. Hi, I'm Joyce Moore, uh, a BCC dental hygiene graduate uh, from 1992. I grew up in Swansea um, in a great neighborhood with a ton of kids. Um, and as a kid, I just like to be out and about um, having fun with my friends. I always I uh, had a bigger interest in science, and I think that that's what led me to, uh, to dental hygiene. I went to Case High School. Um, I was in the college preparatory program. Um, I took some honor sciences classes, and, and that's where I felt my strong suit was. Um, I also did some drama, uh, worked in the drama program, and was the president of the photography club. Uh, so these things were of strong interest to me. After high school, I went to Bridgewater State uh, College, which is now Bridgewater State University, and um, I went with an interest in teaching. Uh, while I was in high school, I had worked at a daycare center, and I felt that that was um, a place that I was happy and um, I thought might be a good fit for my lifestyle. But after being at Bridgewater for a year, uh, I thought, you know, maybe this isn't it. It's not uh, personal enough. Uh, I like working with people on a one-to-one -one basis rather than on a group basis. Um, and I reconsidered. So shortly after being at Bridgewater, I was there for a year. I transferred over to BCC, took the rest of my general ed requirements, and then I had applied to be in hygiene. My mom is a nurse. Um, I had always had an interest in the sciences, but I didn't feel nursing was a right fit for me. Um, my dad had uh, suggested dental hygiene. I looked into it further. I went into the office that he was uh, a patient at, talked to the hygienist there. I had always had a wonderful experience at the dental office as a child. Um, and that led me to hygiene. Um, I like the fact that you can work with a variety of patients, children's, you know, adults, seniors. Um, you can work with special needs populations. And um, I thought this would give me a nice, um, a nice career that, you know, blended my science interest and in working with people. And then also a career that um, would be good to have a family with as well. BCC was a good choice. It was close to home. Um, it had an excellent, very reputable program. Um, financially, it was something that um, I could see me being able to um, 
to afford um, and I didn't I didn't want to choose to travel up to Boston. I liked being near home and I liked what the school had to offer. My mom was a grad. Um, I had been on the campus and I felt good about being there. At BCC um, I was very very fortunate to have some you know wonderful instructors. Um, my general ed requ you know requirements had me for a full year in chemistry and I had uh, a great professor who I'm still in great contact with. Um, the dental hygiene staff really was there to um, get you off on the right foot, support you in the immense amount of learning that you are doing um, you know, in your first and second semester. And um, as you go through the program, you know, it's, it's difficult, but you've got uh, your peers that you're working with, your cohort, and you've got your, your instructors your professors that are um, sending you in the right direction and encouraging you to do your best. When I graduated in 1992 um, from the BCC Dental Hygiene Program, I went out to work in private practice, um, initially at different offices, you know, multiple part-time jobs, which I thought gave me um, a great feel for different offices, different uh, styles of um, of how an office would run. Uh, I then was in a practice for seven years down in Middletown and I'm currently at an office I've been at for 10 years. Um, I decided at one point that after not thinking I wanted to teach that I would go back and get a bachelor's degree and I went up to um, Mass College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences which has the Forsyth School of Dental Hygiene and uh, I did an online bachelor's program there. So uh, I was very fortunate that I was in the first cohort. Um, I actually teach now with one of the other BCC dental hygiene alumni that was in that same group. Um, we, we teach in the dental hygiene program together. So it was wonderful. We supported each other through our, our online learning program and now we are instructors together in the program. Working with students is really interesting because I've been in that position and I remember how it felt. Um, so it's very exciting. You don't know what they're going to ask you. Uh, you know, times have changed, so I'm in the process of being a lifelong learner as they are, keeping up with uh, current information. So I really like working with the students. They keep my life very, very fresh, and it's an opportunity for me to take my life experience and and tell them, you know, this is you're in a very controlled clinical situation, but this is what you know, the more real life application would be and how to apply that. So I've been very fortunate that, um, you know, not only hopefully I'm a, a, a good educator to them, but they, they keep me on my toes. They keep me as a lifelong learner as well. I got married in between the first and second year of hygiene school. So I've actually been married 20 years this year. Um, and my husband and I are very fortunate. We have um, a wonderful son who's going to be eight. Um, and like every other parent, I say I don't know where the time went. Um, we're very lucky that we get to travel. Um, we have a cottage down on Cape Cod that we like to spend time at. Um, and most of our family's in this area. So we are, you know, we're surrounded by our family here and our ten nieces and nephews and our, you know, brothers and sisters. And so we're very fortunate that everybody's around. I consider BCC as you know, a great resource. It, it's part of my life. It's the reason why I've um, worked on the gala committee. It's the reason why I'm the president of the BCC Dental Hygiene Alumni Association. You know, I've been the president, the secretary, the membership. Um, it's a great group that, you know, we want to support the students. And I feel that, um, not that I owe anybody my time to be there, but I want to be there and I want to be involved. So, you know, I I'm so happy to see BCC growing and expanding and doing really wonderful, great things all the way around. Here are some other items making news at Bristol Community College. Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick has announced the appointment of Dr. Patricia Andrade to serve on the Bristol Community College Board of Trustees. Dr. Andrade practices general surgery in New Bedford and is prominent in the region's Cape Verdean community. Dr. Andrade replaces Donald Smith, who served on the board
for the last 10 years. The college held a public meeting last month to discuss the proposed installation of a 330-foot high wind turbine to be located on the northeast portion of the Fall River campus. Proponents and opponents of the plan were able to comment on the project, which has the potential to generate energy savings of nearly $250,000 a year while reducing BCC's carbon footprint. Following the commemoration of the 10th anniversary of 9-11 last month, the BCC Office of Civic Engagement held an opportunity fair for local social service agencies to link up with students looking to give back to their community. Director Professor Dr. Mary Zahm says the program at BCC has grown by leaps and bounds over the last few years, tying students to service that is course related. The students will sit in class, write papers and think about what the teachers are saying, but they don't really get an idea about what it's all about until they go out into the service community and work with real people with real problems and real issues and challenges. It gives them an appreciation of their community and it helps them learn at a, the material for the course at a much, much deeper level. Over 100 local social service agencies are now part of a network from which students can tap to gain community service credit. Dr. Zahm says it's important that these experiences make a positive impact in our community. We don't just want them picking up trash, we want them to be doing something like working at Gifts to Give or uh, doing food drives or things that are meaningful to them. And I think that's the key with all levels of education is to make it a meaningful service uh, that they can learn from and gain an appreciation of the community. For more information on the Civic Engagement Program here at BCC, you can call the Fall River Campus at 508-678-2811, extension 2459. BCC has announced that it has entered into a new transfer agreement with UMass Dartmouth in the area of graphic design. The pact allows for BCC graphic design graduates guarantee of acceptance into the UMass Dartmouth Visual Design Program toward completion of a bachelor's degree. There's also tuition reduction credits available for students who transfer with at least a 3.0 GPA. BCC is now entering its fourth season of intercollegiate athletics with the men's and soccer squads well into their fall season. Second year men's head coach Tony Rose leads a team that was only 3-11 last season. Rose has only four returning players and 18 newcomers, but he's hopeful that this year's club can rebound. The good news is that we had a great recruiting class last year. I didn't have that advantage. I uh, pretty much inherited the previous year's team, but this year we've had an outstanding recruiting class with uh, four international students and uh, some local talent that I recruited heavily as well. So uh, I think we're geared for a very successful season this year. The women's team is looking to return to respectability after not fielding a squad in 2010. Head coach Ernie Betancourt was able to recruit a full team this year with all the challenges that entails. It's a matter of keeping expectations realistic. Um, it's a matter of realizing that these players uh, may not be the kind of uh, competitive players that uh, most coaches would want. Um, but when they do play together, they do well. Uh, they, they, they blend well together, they gel well together. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, yeah, keeping expectations uh, um, reasonable uh, for and realistic for this season. As of this taping, the men have a record of 2-4-1, and one, while the women are winless at 0-5. That'll do it for this edition of Around BCC. We leave you today with a look at the artwork from Phyllis Ewan, Lynn Lisberger, and Michael Yefko, currently on display through October 21st at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery at the Fall River Campus. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.